Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Tobago. I'm Amadara Mills and today we're in the village of Plymouth, Tobago's first European community and former capital. In the next half hour, we'll explore some of the historical sites found in this small seaside village that has a significant past and even a bit of mystery. We'll also bring you up to date on all that's happening in Tobago. So stay with us for all the details, starting with the headlines. The Tobago Heritage Festival is off to a fabulous start as officials pay tribute to the island's cultural stalwarts. The Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute hosts its first golf classic tournament. And later, the Charlottesville community comes alive for Natural Treasures Day. All this and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Stay with us. It's Okombozi 2018, an emancipation celebration on Tuesday, July 31st from 1 p.m. at the office of the Chief Secretary in Kudlow Hall. Come enjoy the emancipation competition for office of the Chief Secretary staff. Categories include Best Male African Wear, Best Female African Wear, and Best Female Headpiece. There will be live entertainment, hot seat prizes, and a prize for the loudest posse. For more information, call 639-3720 or 639-3421, extension 5029. Okombozi 2018, preserving our heritage. Plymouth was the location of the first European settlement in Tobago. In 1654, pioneers arrived on the island, sent by the Duke of Courland. This structure is a representation of their presence in Tobago. It was created in 1978 by sculptor Janice Mintix to mark the site of their settlement. Now, while we're on the theme of legacy, the Tobago Heritage Festival is one of the most highly anticipated events in Trinidad and Tobago. Villages across Tobago share knowledge about the island's traditions with both locals and visitors. This year's event started with a colorful opening ceremony. Have a look. A robot dance is an unusual element for the Tobago Heritage Festival. But this feature in the 2018 opening production helps to shape the story of four teenagers caught up with technology. On their journey to find the sibling of one of the teens, they each experience different areas of the island's cultural traditions. The experiences ultimately teach them about their heritage. They also find that the brother was taken by mythical creatures called Dwens. The youngsters learned about traditional activities, games children played long ago, tambo bamboo music, and dances like the ballet. Folk characters like Anansi and Gangang Sira were also incorporated into the production. It is called Papi Show tonight. Characters welcome. And what we're doing is bringing characters to life and reigniting in all of us the characters that we heard as children growing up about um, La Jablais and the Dwen and the Sukuya and all of these characters and bringing them to life on stage and, and saying to you, the audience, don't forget these people. These are an important part of what we supposed to be paying attention to every heritage festival. The play is meant to encourage people to connect with their inner child. It's also hoped that it will entice more youths to play an active role in preserving our traditions. Many cast members are intrigued with this year's play. I think the narrative is very, very pertinent to Tobago at this time, given that um, in this modern times we tend to be a bit disconnected from our folklore and our ancestors and the way that things used to be in the past. Even through this process, I've learned some things that I never knew before about Tobago, about traditional folk characters and that kind of thing. So it has been an eye-opener. For me, it would just be more preserving what we have and really passing on the knowledge that we have as younger persons um, 
to even younger children so that the, the um, art form would never die. They, they know about it. It's not that you could go and ask one of them and they say they don't know anything about it. It's more of just passing on the knowledge and letting it grow from year to year. The play was performed by the Tobago Theatre Company. The opening night's presentation signaled the start of the Tobago Heritage Festival. It followed the concept for this year's event, which is Embrace, Engage, Experience. For two weeks, residents and visitors get the chance to immerse themselves in the various cultural activities that take place in communities around the island. A short commute away from the Quarland Monument is Fort James, named after James, Duke of Quarland. It was established in the 1760s as a British coastal fort that once defended Plymouth from the invading French. Now getting married is a joyous occasion and in the past it was a community celebration with dancing, singing and a lively bridal procession. This tradition is relived every year through the Mariah Old Time Wedding, one of the most popular events on the Tobago Heritage Festival's calendar. Here's more from Crystal George. If you want to know how to have a healthy relationship, Mariah was the place to be last weekend. As usual, it was the first village to display its traditions for this year's Tobago Heritage Festival. We are assembled here today to join this man and this woman in matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted by God and is enjoined in scripture that marriage be had in honor. Amen. I give this ring as a pledge and token of our union. Of our union. And I call upon this person here present. And I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I to witness that I to witness that I Tilly Smith. Do take Freddy John. Do take Freddy John. To be my wedding husband. To be my wedding husband. The car started their presentation with a wedding ceremony at the Moriah Moravian Church. A procession followed. the happy couple and performers doing the popular brushback dance. They made their way to the Mariah Recreation Ground for the stage performance of the reception. This featured various dances and the skit. Like 30 years anniversary that has been established right now, and um, it is fun for me. I am enjoying it a whole lot, you know, gaining the experience of the different dance, the heritage, you know, it's really outrageous, and I am enjoying it to the fullest. Thank you. Crystal Solomon, a cast member, has been a part of this festival for 14 years. She says nothing excites her more than knowing about her heritage. I enjoy being part of the tradition, enjoy seeing the tradition, enjoy seeing the reenactments because it's nice to know what our ancestors did, what they went through and experience certain things. Patrons also enjoy the Mariah Old Time Wedding experience. Uh, this is my about my third occasion here, but this year, you know, the show has grown. Um, I don't know if it's new management, but it was well organized this year. Yes, and I enjoyed it immensely. I am experiencing Mariah Old Time Wedding for the first time. It was amazing. It was absolutely brilliant. The atmosphere, the people, everyone was really having a good time today. It was brilliant to experience. The Tobago Heritage Festival kicked off on July 13th and will run until August 1st, Emancipation Day.
I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Fort James offers a stunning view over the blue waters and golden sands of Great Courland Bay. The remaining stone structure and four cannons sit on a well-manicured ground, an excellent destination for sightseeing, picnicking, or simply relaxing. Now from Plymouth to Lowlands, where the Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute recently hosted its inaugural Golf Classic Tournament. And the institution is being commended for hosting a successful and promising event. Here's this story. It takes great courage to embark on any new journey. And as the folks from the Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute, THDI, just did, they kicked off their first golf tournament last weekend. It's their intent for it to become an annual tournament on the island. They teed off for two days of golf, fun, and camaraderie at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Golf Resort in Lowlands. It was the first ever THTI Golf Classic Tournament hosted by the Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute, the THTI. The event raised funds to support the running of the institution and for undertaking new projects. And after the final round, the golfers and officials gathered at the resort's Fairways restaurant for the prize-giving ceremony. But before proceedings got underway, the head of the THTI assured the tournament that this is only the beginning of something special. This is the first of many to come in the future. And I want to wish that all of you enjoy the two days of golfing. The THTI and its presidents were also applauded for the initiative by the Chief Secretary, Kelvin Charles. The Chief Secretary believes the tournament also helped boost the tourism on the island. But I must thank him for the initiative, his board and his staff. And as he indicated, this is the first in a series. So I look forward to the annual event. I look forward to having those of you who are here participation return. I look forward to the success of this initiative. I look forward to the fact that this initiative can put THTI on the map, both in terms of promoting it as an indigenous tertiary institution, as well as an institution that contributes to the development of our sports tourism. Caribbean Airlines sponsored the winning prizes of two airfare tickets to America to the winners, Khalil Nabi and Thomas Smith. Second place were Steve Dugardine and Shakib Bipan. And the third place went to Torrance David and Errol Wright. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but coming up, we have highlights of the old time harvest celebration. Don't go away, we'll be right back. So when you hear fiddle and tambourine attack, rush back and dance and fight me, that jump in old time carnival, put in my deceit, come to light to Tobago Heritage Festival from mid July to August 5th. Tobago, it's the place to be. Come and hear four tales, don't I like it all? Come and spend July in Tobago. To protect and preserve the significance of this site, Fort James was enlisted as part of the National Heritage Trust of Trinidad and Tobago. Now speaking of heritage, the harvest is a long-standing tradition carried out in many villages across Tobago. It's a celebration of fruitfulness, a way of giving thanks and sharing. But old-time harvests are quite different from what we know today, as you'll see in this next story. Long ago, harvest celebrations were more religious than they are today. So a morning service at the St. Barnabas Anglican Church in Roxborough was a fitting way to start the village's showcasing of this unique aspect of the island's heritage. Traditionally, it was a time where many people offered the best of their produce and goods to the church. This was a sign of thanksgiving to God for the blessings and fruitfulness of the past year. And therefore, we felt that the Harvest Festival, which is so popular in Tobago, it was certainly ought to be on the heritage calendar and therefore harvest brings together all persons of 
um, religious, socioeconomic background, age, sex, religion, you name it together. And I think it is a good way of ensuring that the traditions of this very popular festival be on the Heritage Festival calendar. The afternoon cantata is another high point of the Old Time Harvest celebrations. Church members and visitors often came back to participate and enjoy this concert-like event. Individuals and choirs display their talents, from monologues to poetry renditions to singing. Those who participated in Roxborough's interactive harvest experience expressed their thoughts on the day's events. I think it's a good idea so that the youth of today will know what was done before us because the cantata and stuff today in the church isn't the same as before. So therefore we get a feel of what happened before and we get to understand the heritage and try to keep on. Seeing the produce, seeing the stuff being produced by members, um, all the different types of wines and cakes and all that kind of thing, that's, that's my happiest part. I think it's, uh, it's something that should be done as far as we can do it because we, we tend to lose the essence of it sometimes. So just to remember what happened in the past is a very good um, thing to do. Another feature of the Old Time Harvest is hosting guests from other villages. Usually family members, friends and people from other parishes came to visit and to support families celebrating the harvest. A variety of local foods, drinks and sweets were served after the church celebrations. In Roxborough, several homes prepared and shared dishes that are customary for the occasion. One host explains what the old time harvest means to him. It's a thanksgiving. A thanksgiving. The, the genesis in this would have been you know, the church offering thanks to the Lord for having provided the farmers, the fishermen, the hunters and so on, the means to provide food or finances for the, to maintain the family, to maintain the family and so on. It came out of us, so the church is saying thanks for the past year and the thanks for the next year coming. So that's why I am part of this thing here. Typically, the produce and goods brought to the church on Sunday were sold a day later. The harvest festivities ended with a dance at the school. We bring you another edition of My Tourism Story. It's an ongoing series aimed at highlighting entrepreneurs within the tourism industry. Today, we feature Sandra Sardina, the owner and manager of Daisy's Flower Shop. Have a look. I have been arranging flowers for the past 18 years and do it with a passion. I am Sandra Sardina, owner and manager of Daisy's Flower Shop, and this is my tourism story. So I studied agriculture at the Eastern Caribbean Institute of Agriculture and Forestry. Um, I wanted to do horticulture, but at the time, my mom said, who would you sell all of these flowers that you're gonna plant to? At that time, there was only one other flower shop on the island. So she kept pestering me to do a course in floral design. But for me, floral arranging was something that old ladies did, and I didn't have an interest in it. So with her prodding at me to take a course, take a class, I decided the next time she called, I was gonna be able to tell her that I did. So I did, and I loved it, and I did more, and I loved it even more. So I decided that I would come home and open up a shop, and I wanted a little bit more information, a little bit more hands-on experience with tropical blooms. And Bernard Beckles, who is also a floral designer as I am, decided to allow me to apprentice with him to get a feel for working with tropical blooms. And the rest is history. At Daisy's, we offer flowers for every occasion. And some of those occasions include birthdays, anniversaries, sympathy, and more recently, intimate weddings. One of the things that we have been lucky um, to be able to do is to import flowers. So we import flowers to fill the needs of our local clientele, and then we're able to source flowers from growers locally 
and companies locally um, to be able to appease the foreigner who's coming in and wants that total local experience. There's a lot out there now on social media. You have Instagram, which is all things pretty, um, Pinterest, and just looking at nature, just looking outside and seeing what God has created, I think it inspires me to come up with different designs. We're able to please by listening to what the bride wants. I, I didn't used to do delivery. I would always be caught in the trenches, doing the work in the background, but of late I started to go out and deliver flowers to brides. To be able to see their faces, the emotion when they see their flowers, um, that let us know that we, we, we pleasing them. So when we, whether I design an arrangement, whether it's full service decor, I think that once I, I touch the event, once I have a touch point to the event, my personality and my style oozes into every aspect of it. From time to time you look at opportunities where you're not just doing promotion of your business. You wanted to have some other sort of impact on society. For International Women's Day we wanted to give back to women who generally bring chair to the office environment and we wanted to pay tribute to those women. So we went from Scarborough to Crown Point, spread and chair. There's a saying that you're as good as your last event, and I pay close attention to listening to what your client wants, which would equal success in that event or um, provision of whatever service it is. And that's the benchmark that we set and just tra strive to keep repeating it. One of the things that um, made me become an entrepreneur is the ability to dictate my pace to a certain degree. Family is very important and so there must be balance. So we're still striving for growth in other areas. My love of candles and fragrance have married themselves in that regard and we have a line of scented candles that is inspired by Tobago. So that's our Jubella line. I think it is important to be able to pass your skill set on to other people. So we're going to look at some teaching in the near future. Mom always says, have oil in your lamp. And really and truly, that is just setting yourself up for success all the time, to always be prepared. I am Sandy Sardina, owner-manager of Daisy's Flower Shop, and that is my tourism story. <laughs>
and it's an opportunity to educate the next generation about the island's cultural heritage. I want us all to understand that today we are not just celebrating the things our foreparents did, but we are essentially being reminded of their creative intelligence. I am taking note of the innovations um, that I have seen and I want to thank you ma'am for the creativity that you have brought to bear this year on the exercise. I was particularly impressed with the very young persons you have singing along with you and that um, tells enough in respect of where this activity is going. Every year, the traditional cooking techniques and the dancing of the koku are the highlights of National Treasures Day. Even the island's top officials participate. The two-week Tobago Heritage Festival will run until August 1st. I'm Kern De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to have your say. It's a segment of our program where we hear from you, the viewers. Let's have a look at who had their say this week. All right, so we're here with Miss Jordan right now. So we're here with Bruce right now. So we're here with Brent right now. Are we asking Mr. Philip? Are we asking Miss Winchester? I can't talk for it. I'm telling that. Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Have Your Say. My name is Ariel Williams and this week we're asking the question, do you think it's important to keep the Tobago Heritage Festival every year? Have a look. Yes, it, it is important to keep the Tobago Festival every year because of the fact that we got to always encourage the younger ones to remind them where they came from and where they are going. The younger ones coming up, they wouldn't know anything about the, the old school. So I think it's, it's, it's a good idea. To keep, to keep it every year. Yes, I think it's important because the new generations aren't realizing what they, where their roots came from. Keeping you grounded even though you're spreading to you know, see what the world is like, but you're grounded as to what, what your heritage is all about here. And that helps you to you know, develop you know, the all-around, holistic kind of person, you know, know your heritage. Do you think it's important to keep the Tobago Heritage Festival every year? Well, I will say yes, sir. The reason why we say yes is to more, you know, bring in money to the country and stuff like that, and it will benefit some of the vendors and them within the area. How they're going about it, they need to change it a bit in terms of um, for the fact that it's July, August, the camps, the children are out of school, they're in camps. Reach out to the camps in the different areas, for example, today being Cane and Bonacourt, there's camps going on, invite the children out, let them come out and see because it, it is about teaching the youths the heritage of the island. I didn't see no upstander then, which it could have been better. So I say now, um, next year, guitarists. As a generation goes by and this thing doesn't happen, it's lost. And when by the time they try to, to, to bring it back, it's incorrect or it's diluted or it's lost its real flavor. Um, there's no harm in, 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 in modifying it or adjusting it a bit to make it more exciting or tasteful. But by keeping it every year, a number of things happen. Um, we have more people constantly coming to the island. I mean, we live here, so seeing it every year, but we seem boring. But if somebody else coming for the first time, it's amazing. It's wonderful. I love it. I love the heritage. And it is a good thing for the heritage in Tobago. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Amadara Mills, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and productive week. We leave you with a montage of the wake and the bongo tradition. Do enjoy. Nominated by luscious heritage, to think I can't tell.